All right, guys, wanted to give you an overview of how Max ECU performs on my twin turbo C6 Corvette with their plug and play system. So I haven't uh, driven this car in probably about two weeks because of work travel. So it's uh, on a little bit of ethanol, it's cold, and I uh, just want to show you kind of how with the uh, basic cold start and everything and warm up that it, it performs quite well. So you can see once it fires, it fires right up. Uh, battery was a little low, so it starts uh, kind of slow. Uh, you'll notice that it takes a few rotations to actually fire up. Um, you can change that. I have that set on purpose based on how it sinks. Um, you can basically have it start up without having the cam sink just based on wasted spark. Uh, I had that on originally and it fires up instantly. Um, I turned it back off so that it, uh, it actually rotates the engine a few times before it gets that sink and fires up. The reason I did that for my application is because I don't drive the car as often as I should and I like to, to get a little oil flowing before it fires the engine up. So right here, um, my other video I talk about the Max uh, ECU M-Dash. Just resetting it so I have a base. You can see the engine's cold from the dash and everything as well. So I'm gonna drive it around and warm it up a little bit and then uh, we'll kind of go over just driving experience uh, some of the cool things like uh, traction control and uh, anti-lag and uh, also just uh, how rear mount turbos behave and perform you know there's a lot of stuff out there about how they lag and you know it's just not going to be uh, nearly as good as front mount turbos and you will have a, a little more lag but in this car it spools so aggressively quick that you know I have it toned down in lower gears just for traction um, and I actually have my laptop over here and I'm going to log it and I'll do some screenshots for you guys to show just from when you floor it to when it actually builds boost uh, how little lag there there really is and you guys can comment and tell me you know how how a front mount turbo performs on something similar um, I obviously haven't compared it both ways on this particular car but uh like I said, it comes on plenty fast and compared to some of the Pro Charge vehicles I've driven in, I feel like it's very, very similar. Plus you have the flexibility and the sound of turbo. So yeah, let's uh, drive it around here, get it warmed up and, uh, and then get on it. always hard to tell just how audio picks up um, but again you know keeping everything off um, just so you can kind of hear how loud the exhaust is I originally didn't have any mufflers you know people say that rear mount uh, turbo is a good enough muffler I uh, I would disagree I think uh, if you're driving this just around town in a weekend car it might not bug you um, but especially like right here around 2,000 RPMs, there was a, a fair amount of drone. So I actually put two, uh, two sets of bullet mufflers, one right after the turbo and the limited space I have for the downpipe. And then I put another set uh, right after the collectors and uh, made a pretty big difference. Not, uh, not quite as quiet as I would like it, but it's, uh, it's good enough to drive for three hours and not, uh, not annoy you too much. I will say I have still try to avoid that one RPM range when you're cruising, but uh, I've definitely had louder, normally aspirated cars. So I think by most people's standards, uh, for the way this thing runs, it's surprisingly quiet. And, and even right there before I'm really getting on it and it's warmed up, you can just tell, you can hear the turbo spooling. And uh, once it gets warmed up, and I'm really getting on it, you'll uh, you'll be able to hear, especially with the windows up, um, you get some great turbo noises, which is a huge uh, huge plus for me for the rear mount setup. All right, guys, got some uh, oil temperature here now. Car's warmed up, so I can uh, go over a little bit how the rear mounts perform. 
So again, just cruising around here at 60 miles an hour. This is kind of right below the droning area. And, uh, and still, it shows I'm averaging like 20 miles per gallon right now. Um, I've checked it, actually gets better. So completely acceptable for something I drive pretty regularly. Um, you can hear me right now, you can have a conversation. It's not too loud. And uh, I'm just going to uh, kind of drop a couple gears and to show you how the boost responds. Alright, so this is 3000 RPMs right here, third gear. You can watch the boost gauge over here, down here, and this is just me. dial down to seven pounds just to kind of keep the uh, the speed down make sure I don't lose traction everything just to give you an idea of how it kind of pulls straight uh, you can see over here seven pounds so again the boost control is phenomenal on max uh, you can set it open loop I have it set up on closed loop now where if there is anything it needs to adjust based on exhaust density with the E85 uh, temperature outside etc it's gonna hit my target which is awesome um, no knock here, so 100 is just kind of like the natural frequency for this motor at RPM. Um, it's pretty easy to set up as well. Uh, so I'm gonna reset that here. And next thing I wanna show you guys is how the uh, rolling anti-lag works, which, which I uh, had mentioned is on my cruise control. So just with the can inputs, you can uh, remap them however you want. I'm not a big fan of cruise control anyway. Um, especially not in a stick shift and again I don't do a ton of highway driving on this car so instead I have used this for rolling anti-lag and I'll just show you it truly is instant you're building up boost and I guess I will go this way gear 3000 rpms and i'm going to hold the anti-lag and flirt and you can watch it actually build boost and then when i release it it'll launch so that was also the no lift shift feature as well um i was hesitant to use that originally uh gotta say though it's actually easier on the drivetrain uh, it does that by using ignition cut uh, and also retards the ignition and then ramps it back in and uh, it doesn't chirp the tires even when I'm on 10 pounds and E85 which put down you know 720 something on tire uh, it it's awesome uh, highly recommend using the no lift ship again something that's just built into max ECU you kind of refine it for your build and it works great and I'll turn here and just kind of do a uh, two, three pull um, with the no lift shift. You can see the traction control working in that case. I'm gonna dial it up to 10 pounds here with again the can control. So boost map three is gonna bring it to 10 pounds. I'll reset this so you can see again how it tracks your, uh, your peak values and everything. Again, I'm running 22% ethanol right now, so it's probably at this power level about, I don't know, I'd say probably 6.30 on tire. I'm just gonna start in second because first gear is really short in the Grand Sports anyway. I'll have to look at the map again. You just can't feel it. Uh, runs great. Comes right out of the power. No issues. You know, you can actually see here my exhaust pressure versus the map. Um, not running as much boost as it shows. You'll see when I put some snapshots of the logs with no lift shift, you tend to have a little bit of a brief spike. Um, doesn't hurt anything again you're pulling the ignition timing and I'm also adding a little extra enrichment in there you see you got no knock whatsoever um, but because you're never closing that throttle blade a you never have uh, any lost boost and uh, B because the engines not really accelerating and the turbos are spooled 
you have a little bit of a pressure spike, but again, doesn't hurt anything whatsoever. Just, uh, just something to note there. And I'm gonna reset that. So again, you've seen the power of this. I think what's equally impressive for the power that it makes is just the general drivability. I played around with a lot of stock computers and you can usually get them to run fine cruising and wide open throttle, but like the partial, it just never drove on the stock computer the way I wanted it to. And, and that's the beauty of the Max, you know, it was really easy, just plug and play harness, top quality stuff. Um, base map I set up just on VE off the bat. Um, they give you a, what's it called? A Alpha N tune from Max. I don't like Alpha N. I've always done things VE, not saying it does or doesn't work. Um, I actually just kind of used HP tuners to build myself a base VE map and uh, refine the tuning using the uh, the Lambda correction to see how it was addressing. And it ran off the bat almost as good as it did on the stock computer. But, you know, obviously I've done a lot of tuning on this at this point um, and gotten to where it, it runs just uh, amazing across the board. So yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much an overview of uh, how this works. I guess I will do one more pull here just to show you again. The uh, complete lack of lag with the rear mount turbos. Um, again, these aren't particularly big turbos, but they're rated at 750 horsepower a piece. Uh, my goal is to make uh, a thousand horsepower on tire just reliably with a built motor on this um, so I purposely size the turbos optimized for that power level uh, while maximizing spool because I, I spool was just really important so. but uh, yeah so let me know uh, what you guys think if there's anything else you want to see or if you have any questions on max ECU um, I think uh, both max ECU and rear mount turbos are a great fit for the c6 platform um, out of the 30 something cars i've had i keep coming back to c6s they do so many things well and this just helps you guys take it to uh, another, the next level so uh, thanks for watching and uh, let me know if you guys have any questions